Yeah, it's an honor for me to, to be here again uh, this year um, and also to give you kind of a very, very short update on what has been happening with regards to uh, Clarence's uh, technical infrastructure. As always, it's impossible to tell you about everything, but I will try to give some pointers and take some specific highlights to give a bit of an impression of about what is actually uh, uh, going on. First of all, uh, of course, it's it's very nice that we can see each other again here uh, physically in the room, but also that we actually have all our remote uh, participants uh, who have joined our virtual hybrid conference. Uh, in that sense, um, a kind of tagline would be back to better. I mean, we're not just back to normal where we had the normal conference, but we have, thanks to enormous amounts of work from several people behind the scenes, uh, this, this fantastic hybrid setup that we have this year and pos possibilities for people from all over the world to, uh, to join us and to, to actively participate into this uh, conference. So yeah, let's embrace at least this positive aftermath of the pandemic episode. I mean, it was not a nice time, but at least some positive uh, side effects have come out of that. Good. Um, I'll, I'll keep this short because it was already presented in the committee reports. Um, what happened with our technical and with our B centers, the repositories? Um, there's one new B center in, uh, in Greece, the Claren AL center. There's been a reassessment of three of our centers, the CMU Talk Bank in the US, the Language Bank of Finland, the MPI for Science Linguistics. There's some more in the queue, but it takes a while before you get through the full core trust seal procedure. So. Um, there, there's more to, to come. Uh, and maybe good as a reminder, Lena already mentioned it, but as a double reminder, uh, end of this month will be the deadline for the 20th assessment round. So if you would like to participate and become a B center or keep your status as a B center, please make sure to uh, send in your documentation before that date or on the 31st. Bit of a historical overview of our uh, centers. Um, as you can see here, um, the total amount of centers has been growing quite uh, quite steadily from uh, a bit over 30 in 2015 over uh, up to I think 70 now in total of which are 24 B centers. Um, and what we can see here mainly is that there's also been a growth in some of the other uh, center types. Uh, the knowledge centers have been growing quite, uh, quite uh, significantly. Um, and what is also good to keep in mind with uh, such a graph is the fact that actually the number of B centers is not growing explosively. Um, it's also due to the fact that actually each center who is already, who was a B center in 2015, has to go through recertification every three years. So it's not when you have a B center that is, this is for eternity. Now you have to keep up with it. You need to make sure that you um, yeah, stay uh, in line with requirements. Also, if requirements are updated, that you respect those. So uh, it's it's quite a, an effort for those B centers to stay B centers. It's also good to, to recognize that. Good, uh, something about the um, federated login. So the possibility to use your, uh, say, Charles University account to access a corpus in, in Norway, for instance. Uh, here we have some uh, statistics of the monthly amount of uh, logins. Uh, and what you can see here, last year we had a really a kind of an outlier growth moment. Um, Difficult to exactly explain it, but of course it might be related to some of the pandemics uh, dynamics. Uh, but what you actually can see is that on the longer term, oh sorry, on the longer term, basically there's a steady growth. And yet last last year was a kind of a exceptional growth. It's now getting a bit more back to normal. But overall, the amount of of people actively logging into Clarence services is uh, is growing overall. Good. Some some highlights of uh, the software development that we have. Um, have done and that our colleagues in, in uh, within Claren have been uh, doing. Uh, first of all, the virtual language um, observatory. Uh, some nice addition has been made there in, in the latest uh, version 4.11, if I'm uh, correct. Um, and that is um, the possibility of adding records from the VLO or links from the VLO to virtual collections. Uh, there's a small widget here. I mean, it's highlighted in green, uh, where if you click on it, you can basically add um, a specific record that is uh, seen from the virtual language observatory into a virtual collection so that you later on can reuse it, can cite it as a collection. You can take a look at the VLO, it's already in production and you can uh, get a better idea about this. Something that is a bit more of work, say, behind the scenes, the metadata curation and link checker. Um, this is kind of typical 
infrastructural part. I mean, it is running somewhere um, at some server. Most people have absolutely no idea what this is or what it is doing. Basically, we have a kind of continuous loop that is taking all of the links that are provided through metadata from Clarence centers that are accessible through the Virtual Language Observatory. And we're doing a kind of continuous quality check. So every so many uh, seconds, a link is checked. And then we keep the status of that link in, in a huge database. I think there's currently over one and 1.5 million uh, links that are continuously checked. And um, we use this as part of the curation dashboard. I think Lena already mentioned it also in her presentation. This is something useful. It's useful for the assessment committee, which then can take uh, not just a sample based quality um, assessment of a center, but can really look into all the links provided by a center. It's useful for the centers itself because you see, okay, oh, where are my broken links? Or is there maybe some issue with this or that record? You can curate the data. And um, it's of course also useful for um, for the, for the people who want to use the data, because for instance, in the VLO, there is an option to see the broken links and to see that, okay, this is something that has been recognized before. Um, there, there's a lot of things that have been added. There's a restricted access category, which means that if something is password protected, that will also be indicated uh, if possible. Um, there is a first alpha version of an API for the link checker. So that means that you actually can also submit links yourself actively into the link checker. Then, then the machinery will keep on running and will do the link checks for you. And then afterwards you can access the, the results. For those of you who are interested in this, um, you can uh, take a visit this afternoon afternoon to uh, Wolfgang's uh, Bazaar stall where he will be presenting the uh, API uh, looking into the audience where Wolfgang is over there yes so Wolfgang will be doing the Bazaar stall presentation this afternoon go and talk with him he can explain you everything about uh, the link checker and the, the curation module Good, then over to the virtual collection registry. Uh, there's also been a lot of development um, on, that, uh, on that front, um, leading to smoother user interface, but also so improves um, connectivity. Uh, for instance, there's a link now um, towards the, the SIMD Explorer from uh, Klaus, who is also here in the room, um, that which allows you to fully download uh, collections. There's um, a pop-up based connection to the language resource switchboard, which then allows you to process resources with uh, tools provided from Clarence centers. And there's also, um, in terms of integration, an uh, easy to use uh, Java -based, uh, JavaScript based widget that allows you to, uh, for instance, integrate the virtual collection registry into the VLO, as we have done as an example integration, but also into repositories. And several repositories have actually already integrated this. So it's really great to see that. Then the language resource switchboard, I already mentioned it. Uh, this is our kind of um, switching tool that connects data sets towards uh, some of the Claren tools that are uh, available. Um, also quite some improvements. Uh, there is this uh, new version of the pop-up, which is now available and which basically allows you to have a kind of switchboard pop-up inside your application. If you, for instance, process something from virtual collection registry or a link that is provided through the virtual language observatory, you will notice that this uh, switchboard uh, pop-up is in place. Um, there's also, also kind of additions as uh, experimental support for multiple input files. It's not an easy thing to do, but uh, there's, there's a first version in there. Now, actually, the really exciting part is when you're bringing all these things together. And um, I, I can tell 100 stories here. I will keep it to just one. But uh, there's a case that we recently had um, where we wanted to check basically um, the virtual collections that are registered uh, in, in the virtual collection registry for broken links. Now, this is actually where the teams come together. So it's team, virtual collection registry, virtual language observatory, and the link checker that can be combined, give an answer to this. So um, what you then can do is, and this is a screenshot from um, the VLO, is basically use the VLO to access the database of the link checker to check the URLs that are coming in from the virtual collection registry. For the technical mumbo jumbo, uh, the, uh, OER, the SIMD records from the virtual collection registry are harvested into the VLO. And the VLO is basically using the link checker API to check uh, every so many uh, days like, okay, is this link still up to date? Is it reported as broken? Is there an issue with it? And you can also access it there. And basically, um, if you then see uh, one of these, it's a bit small here on the screen, but if you see one of these exclamation marks, it means like, okay, there is an issue with this record. There is at least one broken link in it. 
Um, and then indeed, if you click on that, uh, just take an example uh, collection here, uh, you can uh, get some more details about the, the link that is broken. In this case, you can see it was checked last time on the 7th of October, and uh, it's basically the resource has come. So this is a very useful tool also for, for data curators, for, for the people um, keeping the virtual collections up to date, keeping the repositories up to date to see, okay, there's something broken here. And you don't need to click a thousand times, you just give the right query, then you dive into the records, and then you can find the original context and get it curated on that side. This is really, you know, where sometimes all of the boring infrastructural parts come together and really lead in the end to a very exciting and useful um, yeah, ecosystem of things that really get your problem solved. And this is really, I think, why it's, why it's so great that all these uh, modules of the technical infrastructure interact so well. Good. Uh, another thing that we have been working on, and you can access it on clarin.eu slash programmers, is a kind of landing page under the title Clarin for Programmers. So traditionally, uh, lots of the tools have been um, directed towards, say, uh, people from humanities who want to do specific uh, processing tasks. Uh, but um, in the last year, we've also been looking more into depth in what would be the needs of people who have some uh, uh, yeah, knowledge about how to program, how to do some code development. And we've brought all of the know-how that we had together there in kind of easy to use entry page. Um, first of all, we've made sure that there is uh, open a API documentation for the APIs that we are providing for our tools like virtual collection registry or digital object gateway, the link checker. Um, there's also work on a fully API based design for the next version of the VLO 5.0, where also the backend API will be, will be fully open to the public. So you will basically be able to create a full, full um, how to say, specialized front end on top of the uh, hard work that the VLO backend is doing for you. So this really uh, will be a nice addition. We hope to be able to present it uh, next year. There's a lot of JavaScript widgets that have been uh, made up for um, easy integrations. I already showed some examples there. The, the language resource page board virtual collection registry. It's basically a matter of including a JavaScript snippet into a web page, having some um, yeah, annotations connected to HTML elements, and you can basically start using those uh, tools with your web page or your repository. Finally, there's been a lot of work done on, uh, on notebooks. There's also a specific landing page for that, clarin.eu slash notebooks. And if you're interested in this topic, uh, there will be a very interesting presentation, I think, this afternoon by, uh, by Twan and Michal on uh, processing Europeana text collections with uh, Jupyter notebooks. Uh, all details will be provided there, but make sure to see it. It's quite interesting. Finally, um, something on uh, the renewed uh, status.clarin.eu. Uh, this is something fairly, well, technical, uh, so to say, but uh, it's, qu it's quite important that we have a good monitoring of our infrastructure. And uh, through this system, you can now both access the real-time status of our services, but you can also get an, a good overview of uh, planned maintenance intervals. And you can even subscribe to um, updates about these maintenance intervals. So this allows it, even when everything goes down, still to have a good overview of what is happening. Uh, we hope it won't be necessary to use that platform to announce everything is down, but uh, it's good to, to at least have some certainty about that. Good, and finally, to some numbers about our yearly uptime. I mean, in general, it has been going quite well, but I think this year we reached a record since the time that we have been measuring this in 2017. We had a yearly uptime for our most important services of 99.96%, which basically means that things are available most of the time. And that's, of course, why we are uh, yeah, doing all the hard, hard work on the, on the technical infrastructure. Good, that brings me to the, um, to the uh, end of my presentation. I um, have here some point on uh, looking into the future. It's a bit of a, a pub quiz also. Does anyone recognize uh, the place that is here on the, on the image? Yeah. Does anyone know the, uh, the artist who made the painting? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll reveal it. It's actually an AI algorithm that made this. Uh, so it's uh, the, this DALI uh, algorithm that uh, painted it for me when I just entered Art Deco Prague illustration with Charles Bridge fading into a lit sci-fi hybrid highway. And this is actually what you get out of it. It's quite amazing. Um, of course, that's, that's, that's a nice uh, way to get easy illustrations for um, a slideshow. Uh, but of course, it's also good to know that this kind of AI-based uh, systems only can run 
uh, with all of the huge data sets and tools that are made available through many of the Clarion centers. And of course, uh, I think it's a good opportunity to mention here that our host, uh, Linda Clarion, he said, plays a major role in the development of language AI data sets and tools, other Clarion centers as well, of course. But since we are here, I think it's, it's really should be put into the focus. And it's good to, to realize that these language resources play a key role in the development of all these kind of nice technologies that are not the future, but that are actually already today. That's also why uh, from, from the side of Clarin, we will be having a closer focus on this and we will be providing more and more information on how Clarin relates to AI and basically also explain the importance of um, the Clarin infrastructure for the development and um, the furthering of uh, AI infrastructure. Good. Uh, with that, I would uh, really like to thank uh, especially the many people who have contributed to the uh, technical infrastructure. And I really would like to, to ask you a round of applause for all the people mentioned here, the assessment committee, the central developers team, developers from the national consortia, our task forces, and everyone else who is contributing to the construction and operation of the infrastructure. Thank you very much. Thank you.